been out of the word. And I said to the people, I want to pray for everybody who has something wrong with their knee from the knee down. That's what the Lord told me. Now, see, this is when we step out in faith. He only told me one thing. Yeah. So people started lining up over here. So me and I prayed for a few people. Me and I, I had his, uh, what do you call that? Uh, his son uh, minister with me a few for a few of these. And so before this service took place, follow me very carefully here. Before this service took place, we had a wild worship service. It was awesome. People were dancing and shouting and running around the building, you know. And I looked over and I saw a little boy. Five-year-old little boy, and he kept jumping up and spinning, and jumping up and spinning, and jumping up and spinning. I thought, isn't that cool? Little kids can really worship, can't they? They don't care. They just jump up. He thought it was fun. So, so I'm sitting there, and I'm praying. We're, we're sitting these people down, and we're praying and, and praying over their legs and everything, you know, the way we do sometimes. Now, listen very carefully. All of a sudden, I turned around, and I saw this little boy. And I said, he, you know, Pastor John knows me real well, so this is okay, you know. I knew it would be okay. I said, uh, and I called the little boy's name. I said, would you like to pray with me over this man? He helps him. Sure. He comes running up. I said, come here. I grabbed his hand. Now I was under a strong anointing. I blew on him. He went, whoosh, whoosh. he gets up, and he's under a stronger anointing than I was, five years old. I said, go over there and lay hands on that man. There was a man sitting there. I, I kid you not, he was bigger than me. He's probably about 350 pounds, to be honest with you. He had come up for prayer. I said, lay your hands on his legs and pray the wildest prayer you can. I called this boy's name out. He reached over and put his hands on that man's leg and prayed, and that man, boom, God knocked him and rolled him over against the wall. Bam! Laid him right out over there. Then I said, had this little boy praying for people. I said, stay up here. Then all of a sudden, God focused my attention on some of the teenagers. And he said, I want you to some of these teenagers to come up. So I had the pastor's uh, son, the pastor's daughter. I blew on them. Power God came on Now, I was under a heavy anointing, but it came on ten times stronger on them than it was on me. You guys listen to me now? Yes. So, we had this meeting. I'm telling you, people were people were healed, people were delivered, and the crowd was watching this. This had to be God. It was impossible for it not to be God. Little children, and they they were gasping, and, you know. And, I, and there's some people in there in that meeting, some preachers that had been in the ministry a lot longer than me, and they told me later I've never seen anything like that. Now listen, there's a whole row of people I didn't know. I know a lot of people in church. I didn't know who they were. I go, are you guys all related? Yeah, Hispanic uh, family. I said, can you come up? I said, stand up here, stand up here. And, and I had pastors, so I said, go over there, walk right over there. He walked right over there. I said, blow on him. He goes, boom. They went, ooh, boom. They all fell down at one time, and demons started coming out. Screaming, just left out. Hallelujah. And everybody in that place, I'm telling you, people got saved, people got filled with the Holy Ghost, people got healed, yes. people got delivered with evil spirits, and it was the little children and the That's teenagers right. operating under this tremendous anointing. Now, it's not the first time I've had this happen, under the tremendous anointing of the Holy Ghost. And you see, what God was showing us is it doesn't make any difference how old or how young, as long as you're available, he can come with power. And it shocked some of those preachers, and it shocked a lot of the people in the room. And when we went to the beach the next day, we were quiet about it because it was so holy. I'd never seen anything like that. But I got, and then the Lord said to me, that's a taste. And tell everybody, that's a taste of what's coming. Hallelujah. That's just a taste of what's coming to your church. Isn't that awesome?
and the teenagers that were assigned to pray for most of the people. That's right. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now for these precious people and people on Periscope and all the people that are going to be watching this later and those that these people will affect and there's pastors and leaders in this room. God, I don't know what to say. The only thing I can say is that we definitely need revival. We need something to happen that stirs the hearts of even the most difficult and challenging person. We need things in our churches that begin to even just come down on preachers and leaders that we've never had before. Now, Lord, we, we, we don't abide with fanaticism or uh, demonic stuff, but Lord, we are asking you for the real deal. Yes, yes, yes. To come down and in every hungry church across every place in America and around the world, we know it's happening. I have, I have friends that started uh, in a cornfield down there. Now they're up to a thousand people in a tent. It's happening all over the place as God begins to move so strongly. And I pray, now listen, I pray for Modesto. I pray for this entire central coast already been prophesied. Many, many, many great things are going to happen. This is going to be a hub of revival. And the churches, many of these churches are going to be hubs of the Holy Ghost revival fire that will burn and to go out to the nations and the influence, Lord God, will be uh, it will be uncountable what will happen for the kingdom of God through these great men and women of God that were sitting here and those uh, in this area as well as those that are watching all over. You're raising up, you're raising up Christians that will not take no for an answer. They're going to pray and they're going to seek you. Until the glory begins to fall. Yes. In Jesus' name. Well, we thank you, Father, for it. And all of you guys said a mighty amen. 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 Did you guys get anything out of that? Amen. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but it seems like a holy moment in here to me. Yes. Yes. It seems like God is doing the saturate. Us with your presence. Yes. Hallelujah. How many of you in here, careful about raising your hands, how many of you in here would say, Pastor Tom, uh, th see, this is not a legalistic call, this is not a condemnation call, this is none of that. But you say, I, I know in my heart I need to be praying more. And I want to make that commitment today. Raise your hands if that's you. And you mean it. I want you to jump up and come up here real quick. Somebody can help me.
And then uh, Stella and I are going to the physical beach to suffer for the Lord. After, after we're done suffering for the Lord, I'm going to Medford, Oregon. So if any of you are up that way, uh, let's you know the dates for that one? Uh, it's the next Sunday. Whatever that is. Hallelujah. Pastor Bob and Laura's church. Yes. Not this Sunday, the next Sunday. You're ministering there in the uh, what, what, what service? Uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow night. we'll kick it off, and then Sunday night, we'll finish it, yeah. So, come on out, they're wild, sorry, great service, you'll enjoy it, I guarantee good music, it's a believer's church of Madera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just type it in your Google, to so give you the address. Amen. God bless you. Yeah,